How close was Mitch Marner to becoming a Nashville Predator? We'll discuss the report and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. What's going on, Dave? What you doing on a, on a Thursday night as we record here? Watching football. Watching some CFL football. Yeah, oh yeah. Go Boatman, go Argos. Dave, credentialed media member of the Toronto Argonauts. So we uh, we we like to speak kindly of the Argos in these parts. Right? I mean, there's not many people speaking highly of them in these parts, so some has to. Well, there's just not many people speaking of them in these parts, <laughs> highly or low. Fair. <laughs> very fair. People, you, you're missing out on a team that actually wins in Toronto. Honestly, though, two years ago was a great championship run. Uh, last year, fumbled the bag there in the East Final. We'll see what they can get up to. Uh, what they can get up to this year, but with the Leafs kind of sucking every first round every year, you got the Raptors heading to a rebuild. I don't know what the hell's going on with the Blue Jays, but they're unwatchable. TFC can't win a freaking match to save their lives either. You really just got the Boatman as like the only half decent successful. You know, Toronto sports franchise. I guess the the Toronto women's hockey team at the PWHL, you know, that team <laughs> was great as well this season. But right now, you know, it's, it's pretty much just TFC or bust, I suppose. Um, that being said, we do speak on the Maple Leafs here on the Lockdown Leafs podcast. We really should kind of get a, a Locked On CFL show. We should we should talk about uh, talk with with David Locke potentially about getting one of those bad boys started. I know you know a few people who'd be interested in oh, getting yeah. that going. But here on Lockdown Leafs, we talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs, and there was a very interesting report that I want to dive into uh, right here, right now. And uh, according to Nick Kiprios, who very reliable source, obviously former NHLer, hosts the show on Sportsnet, writes for the Toronto Star, um, he. I don't even know if we could call it a report, but he kind of does like a rumblings piece, uh, you know, every week that he does for a, a weekly column in the Toronto star. And one of the rumblings, one of Kipper's notes that he had uh, in this week's column was apparently Ryan O'Reilly was pushing hard for the predators to trade for Mitch Marner ahead of free agency and that free agent spending frenzy that the, that the Preds went on. That's interesting on a couple of fronts, I, I would think, Dave. I'll let you kind of talk first, and then I'll, uh, I'll I'll come in with my thoughts on it. I mean, it was just very interesting for, for a couple of reasons. One, we kind of heard some things when Ryan Riley left Toronto that weren't exactly complimentary of the group right. that he played with. So it was uh, that was very interesting. But I think it also kind of just speaks to what he thinks the Nashville Predators needed which is this is a team that struggles to generate offense. When Ryan O'Reilly literally joined the Leafs, it only took a few games for him to score a hat trick playing on a line with Mitch Marner. Sure. Uh, so I, I think there was a bit of this guy will definitely help our offense. I've played with him. I know what his commitment to his two way game is like, you know, there's a clear need and our team has a boatload of cap space. Let's go and get it done. And didn't happen because no. they decided let's go and just grab every top free agent that's on the board, which, you know, that cost them nothing that cost them just cap space, not the uh, the yeah. multiple assets it would have took to acquire Mitch Martyr. Instead, they said, nah, we'll just go get, you know, Steven Stamkos, Jonathan Marsh. So uh, who, who, else <laughs> who else? Brady Shea. Brady Shea on the back end to replace Ryan McDonough. Like, yeah, they just went big game hunting and we're we're clearly the uh the the you know quote unquote winners of free agency when you talk about a team that improved the most with with their free agent additions uh and they were able to add 
offense without having to give up anything. And uh, so they obviously went that route instead of trading for, for Mitch Marner, but you kind of hit the nail on the head there. I, I, the first thing that went through my mind was I, I was under the impression that Ryan O'Reilly, I, I know that there was the, the one quote about how the, the media, the fishbowl within the media was maybe a little much. And that was a reason why he didn't, necessarily love it here in Toronto and why he wanted to to go elsewhere just the media was a bit too much for him but didn't it also seem and I know we this is this is the issue sometimes with trying to read between the lines sometimes but it did feel like he thought that the team just couldn't get it done you know like it it just did seem like he felt like this team was not going to be able to get over that hump because of who was there, what their mentalities were, and the fact that the Maple Leafs just seemed to crumble in the come playoff time every single season. Now, Ron O'Reilly was on the one team that did win a round. I will, I will acknowledge that, obviously. So we did see them win, um, and I'm sure that meant something to them. But I do think it's fascinating that uh, he was pushing hard for Mitch Marner. And if Ryan O'Reilly, a guy who knows what it takes to win, especially in the playoffs, um, he's won a cup before, Conn Smythe winner, absolute warrior. If he was pushing hard for Mitch Marner, I mean, does that change your tune a little bit for how much Leafs Nation has been trying to push out Mitch Marner? Maybe in a way. I you brought up the point about, you know, trying to get rid of get it out of the bottleneck that is like the Toronto media. I also want to Ryan O'Reilly kind of is like if I can if we can get this guy outside of Toronto. Get him into a market maybe where he's a little more comfortable and can be himself. We could really see him flourish. I wonder if that is part of it too. And I think that's where a lot of people are kind of thinking. This is where like there's some some fans who are, especially the ones who don't want to see Marner get traded, because they're going to say, "Will you watch Mitch Marner get traded to a Nashville, to a Vegas, or a whatever team, and he just goes on a tear?" Because guess what? He doesn't have to deal with the scrutiny that he's gotten in Toronto, and I, I I'm one of those fans. Now yeah. I also am on record saying I would be okay with that happening because if it's not going to happen here, at least let him go light it up somewhere else and not you know keep holding this team back. Um, you know both teams, both parties could prosper. I am on record saying that because I do think that if he got out of this market, you know the pressure is relieved. Maybe he does kind of turn into that uh, that that same player that we've that we've watched in the regular season be an all pro right winger two times. Um, you know, could that, could that guy translate into the playoffs without gripping his stick a little too much without thinking uh, too much and, and being, you know, in the pressure packed city that is Toronto here, this, this little sardine can of a, uh, of a hockey market. So, it, you know, it's very conceivable that Ryan O'Reilly had the exact same thoughts. And he's like, Hey, if we can get this guy pennies on the dollar, I know, the talent that is inside there. And if we can get that in springtime, boy, we've got ourselves something. We we've got a player here. So uh, I, I do think that it's very interesting that uh, Ryan O'Reilly of all people was pushing to bring in Mitch Marner into Nashville. And it did get me thinking like, what do you think a trade would have looked like if that were the case? Like we we've always kind of talked about possibly a trade package with those two surrounded by like a UC Soros and Mitch Marner, like what else would have had to be included? Would would Soros have even been an option? Like they they did re-sign him, so they clearly wanted to bring him back. Maybe it's maybe it's Askarov who could have been part of the deal. Yeah. Like what type of trade do you think we would have been looking at? Well, I think like with with the trade with the signing of Soros, like everyone's kind of like, all right, when's the trade for for Askarov going to come down? Because mm-hmm. you know that's that's a player eventually who's going to want to be a starter and he's not going to be a starter as long as Saros is making what he's making there. So I, I think, yeah, it would have started with, it would have probably started with an Askarov plus like you have to figure, figure the salary was going to have to be some salary was going to have to be exchanged. Like I, 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 I mean, they had a lot of room. Clearly they gave yeah, like, how much money to bring in those players. They, they had the salary cap. I don't think they had they the salary cap. Salary. I'm just assuming that if you're Nashville, you also, didn't want to just go out and get Marnie. You probably wanted to go out and get a couple of those other pieces that, like, a, like they needed blue liners badly after they traded McDonough. Um, and they kind of still do. So, like, I, I wouldn't even think that any of those D men would have been involved. 
You think like um, a Fabro, maybe a Dante Fabro? Like I thought, I would have, I would have said, like I would ask for a Dante Fabro to be included in the trade for sure. Um, but like I'm looking up front, like there's not really anyone I say, okay, the Leafs have to go out and get this guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe like an Evangelista, if you're kind of looking for a younger player off that roster to go out and get. But he doesn't really move the needle as much for me. He's a decent player, but not one that I'm like hell bent on going to get. And then you're just looking at their prospects, right? Lamoureux. Who do they... Kind of fits yeah. the bill for what a tree living guy, what, what he would like in a prospect, right? Um, outside of that, yeah. I mean, there's some dudes, Yoakum Camel, maybe if they're willing to mm-hmm. to give up one of those uh higher end prospects potentially. So and there there, there might have been a trade uh that, that could have worked, obviously, but once they decide, okay, we're gonna hang on to Soros, we're actually just gonna, you know, hit the free agent route, and maybe that would have been plan B. You know, if, if Steven Stamkos, what if he ends up staying in, in Tampa? And what if, uh, you know, Jonathan Marshall so signs elsewhere? And, uh, you know, maybe they still could have got Brady Shea. But and all of a sudden, they, they get to July 2nd, 3rd, 4th, today, July 5th. And they're thinking, well, we still need to add some impact dynamic scoring. Maybe there would have been a trade, you know, that, that like maybe Marner would have been plan B if they struck out on free agency, perhaps. I, I think so. A part of me wonders if... You know, the reason why the Leafs were, you know, keeping an eye on maybe Nashville and a lot of people were kind of talking about Nashville when they're talking about those free agents, they had the most space and they had the biggest need up front. Mm -hmm. It made the most sense. Like we kept talking about potential landing spots for Martin. The only one that made sense. Like I know people are talking about Vegas. Vegas does did not have the cap space that Nashville had and the cap space moving forward. That's the more important part. It's not just the the cap space. Now it's being able to sign Martin to the deal that he's going to want to get, you know, moving forward. And that's why Nashville made the most sense. Yeah. But didn't happen. Won't happen now. They've, they've, no. they've allotted that cap space to uh to a few different players and mitch marner remains a toronto maple leaf i'm of the belief at this point that he will remain a maple leaf uh yeah. for the rest of the season uh at, at at this juncture so get ready for a lot more mitch marner contract talk see what that number could look like potentially and will there be some sort of extension in the in the middle of the season pre you know, before the season at some point in this summer i think it was what last august we had uh we had um Austin Matthews deal come through just like a random Wednesday in August. Like, could we see yeah. something similar? Possibly. Potentially. Uh, I guess we'll kind of see where that goes. Do you have any final comment or do you want to move on to uh Yeah, the- I've always gotten a lot of people ask me what I think about Marner. I said if the trade hasn't happened by now, I doubt it's going to happen unless a team, you know, really gives the leaves a re- reason to go to Marner and ask him to waive the no move clause. So I think at this rate, you got to prepare. I know that disappoints a lot of people that were expecting big changes to happen. This is why a team that wants to have no movement clauses for guys, it you know, it's nice to give these out, but it also puts you in the position where you can't do much because mm-hmm. you have you, you don't have the flexibility to just go out and make the move. You have to involve a lot of people in the process that Speaking might not want to agree. Yeah, speaking of contracts and not having a contract ready to uh, to sign on July 1st, despite being eligible, there's another superstar Canadian player in the league. We'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, who did not receive a contract. And it's got people around the league kind of eyeballing what's going on over there. We'll tell you who that is and the situation about that in a little bit. But up next, we'll talk about uh, our takeaways from the first couple of days of Leafs development camp. That's coming up next here on the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicles and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. 
With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you as we are each and every weekday all through the month of July. I believe August will drop down to, to three days a week where we really hit the dog days. But we're with you all the way through the month of August every single weekday, Monday through Friday. So while everyone else takes time off and everyone else goes up north, goes to the cottage, goes fishing, we're here to supply you with the latest and everything you need to know about what's going on with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So make sure you're subscribed here to the Locked On Leafs podcast, wherever you get your pods, and also up on YouTube, which uh, we just passed the 5,700 mark on YouTube, by the way, for uh, for for subscribers. And uh, we, we are on our road to 10K, right? We get to 10,000 subscribers. We're going to be giving away another Maple Leafs jersey of your choosing. So like the, the quicker everyone subs up and – we still have about like 50% of our, our, our viewership that are unsubscribed. We could get to the 10K a lot quicker, and y'all could get your, get a jersey a lot quicker if you subscribe. So uh, go ahead and do that if you would like to. That would be much, much appreciated. Leave a comment down below your thoughts on the Maple Leafs offseason so far. Uh, would you have wanted Mitch Marner? And to get traded to the Nashville Predators, or uh, are you okay with Mitch Marner returning to the Toronto Maple Leafs next season? Let us know down below. Um, elsewhere in Leafland, on the ice, I guess, the only thing that's really happening on the ice these days, uh, Leafs development camp were two days in the books. And uh, what are some takeaways, I guess, that you have to this point so far, Dave? Well, it's nice to see that Jake Muzzin isn't totally broken. He is able to go on skates and he's able to go on the ice. So that was yeah. that was a nice little surprise there to see him uh to see him around and also to hear how, how much he's really taken Cade Weber under his wing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Pretty much ever since he's been traded, he's been, they've been talking, they've been texting, going through his game and ways to improve. It's a little value of keeping a guy like Jake Muzzin around. I'll tell you that. 100%. And, and I mean, Cade Weber is a guy who was with the Maple Leafs, right. As, as a, as a healthy scratch technically, but part of the roster during the, the playoffs, like a black ace uh, during the playoffs. So, you know, he would have been around the team. He would have been around Jake Muzzin and where he started to have that relationship with him. So, you know, seeing that continue into the first couple of days here of Leafs development camp doesn't surprise me. Um, I did listen to Kay Weber and, uh, and his media availability today. And I thought it was interesting, you know, him speaking about the experience of being a part of that playoff run just watching you know all these NHLers go through their process do what they got to do going into a game seven uh said he really enjoyed that experience obviously and hopes to one day be in their footsteps uh and and play you know a high level playoff game like that hopefully he could be part of a, a winning team in a game seven um talked about learning better nutritional values this week which you know we always talk about least development camp and we talk about the on ice like oh what are we seeing on ice but there's a lot of off ice things that they learned about like they just learn how to be pros right how to take care of your yeah. body you know media training is part of these least development programs as well which i think ben danford by the way <sighs> go listen to his media he's he's trained already like this guy already sounds like a future captain like he sounds like john tavares it's weird it's super weird how like he's mastered media training so quick oh it's done right from when they're in like the junior hockey i i especially with the junior hockey players i've noticed yeah, that like I I interviewed Evan Bouchard when he was drafted by Edmonton. It was still a London night, hmm. and like just yeah, quick like answers, glass, well, quick well, answers, well, glass well. wall. Like you were just like a brick wall trying to break him down to get something out of him. Like they're yeah. it's I understand why they do it. You know, it's but it's also like let these guys have a bit of personality. Like Easton Cowan's a little better at it than some others. Well, I'll tell you about someone who's got a whole bunch of personality. Victor Johansson, not a CHLer, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. played in the 
uh, Swedish Junior League out there. He was the least fourth round pick this year. He's, you know, a bit of a smaller guy, six foot one. He's got size, but um, Hockey DB came in at 143 pounds, is what his, his elite prospects page says. And I wasn't sure if I believed it. And then uh, I, I was listening to his media availability today, and someone flat out asked him, What are you weighing at right now? And uh, did you hear? Did you hear the number? Did you hear the answer, Dave? I actually didn't hear the number, so I'm glad you. I'm gonna get it from you. Mm. I know you've been very keen on this. Well, I mean, it's it's Brad Tree Living. Like when you see a 143 pound defenseman gets drafted by Brad Tree Living in the Maple Leafs, it makes you raise your eyebrow, right? Like you start mm-hmm. going all Dwayne the Rock Johnson on you, and you're just not sure what the heck's going on. Was it a typo? Well, no. He's currently weighs 147 pounds. That's what he said today. I'm currently at 147 pounds today. The plan is to put on a lot of weight. Plan is to eat a lot over the summer. Maybe he could eat some more PB and J's. Now, if you saw Jalen Hyatt of the New York Giants said that he's scarfing down PB and J's as his like midday snacks, a couple on crustables down his gut to try and put on some weight. Maybe Victor Johansson's going to try and do the same thing to try and bulk up from 147 pounds. So a lot um, of PB and J's, man. Lots of PB and J's, a lot of them. Uh, I will say this though. Um, you know, he was, someone asked him about his, his family uh, and, and he was talking about how his brothers um, are, are big boys as well. So his brother's like six foot, six foot four, 200 pounds. So I think the Maple Leafs kind of are, are banking on family genes eventually coming through here for Victor Johansson and this selection. Um, they're not banking on him being a sub 150 pound defender for much longer. Now that he's, you know, going to be 18 years old pretty soon, they're hoping that he hits that growth spurt at some point in the next year or two. And uh, he does kind of, fill out like his brother did like he's six foot one so he's got decent size you know he's not like undersized in in height terms he's a he's a you know an average heighted nhl player but now he's got to add a little mass to that frame so that's what victor johansson wants to be doing over the course of the summer that's his goal obviously and two two things also i want to acknowledge about him dude was all smiles he was he was so happy to be there just seems like a really good kid like super happy go lucky kid and uh, I, I I found out why about midway through when someone asked him about his his draft experience, the kid, I don't know how to take this. Like you look at this as as maybe even a shot at the scouting staff or or, or at Brad Tree Living. But the kid literally said, like, I didn't even know if I was going to get drafted or not. Like like he flat out came out and said that probably because of his size and because he'd played in like, you know, a, 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 a tier two Swedish junior league, like not a lot of. People got out to go and scout scout him, I'm sure. So he wasn't even sure he was gonna get drafted, let alone gets taken in the in the fourth round by, you know, the 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 hockey mecca, the biggest hockey market in the league. So uh he was all smiles, it was really cool. Uh he's happy to be there, obviously. And I'm I became a Victor Johansson fan today. I will say that. I'll be rooting for the kid. Hopefully he puts on some weight and eventually does uh show up to Maple Leafs camp, you know, one of these years and um competes for a spot and hopefully gets to the nhl someday um and then uh, we heard from haley wickenheiser talking about uh easton cowan why don't you tell the good folks listening what she had to say about the least number one prospect yeah i mean he obviously the probably the prospect that made the biggest jump in terms of progress and development over the last year so obviously you know talking to someone who's been watching that development closely what are the chances that we see easton cowan make a push for the Le- a spot on the Leafs next year. And this is what Kahir's response, courtesy of Mark Masters. He's going to make a push. Always hard to take that jump from junior. That's a big step, but he's proven everybody wrong at every level, so I don't put it past him. I, I, yeah. I think that's that's why people really have gravitated towards Eason Cowan, especially Leafs fans, because everyone was talking about how that pick was not exactly you know, viewed as a great use of a first round pick. Right. And all of a sudden you have uh, a player like him go out, win C- you know, CHL MVP honors, just absolutely crushing teams in the playoffs. What did he, go, like under- 30, he had like a 34 game. 36. Point I think it was like 36 game point streak. Unreal. Game. 
unbelievable, right? And not just like one point. Like he's putting up mul- multiple points. I think he got further than that with the playoffs, but like regular season, he was breaking records there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe a little underwhelming. He had, he had like 15 points in in four games yeah. in the OHL Cup final. Yeah, Unreal. like obviously some people may have been a little underwhelmed by his Memorial Cup. But I think in the final game, he, you know, with London not exactly playing well, he tried his best to get his team back into it. And like they were within seconds of forcing overtime <laughs> in that game. So, like, there's a lot to like with Easton Cowan. I, I think there's just, he's, there's a lot of raw talent there. And he's going to have to see if, you know, obviously, as Wickenheiser says, the jump from juniors to the NHL is totally different. Yeah. You're not going up against junior players. So, that is something that I'm sure. Just trying to temper those expectations a little bit there. Yeah, um, there is a spot open right now in the in the in the top nine though, and and I, I would imagine that if things remain the same and they don't bring in another top nine forward at some point here, the rest of the the off season, that Easton County will be given every opportunity to try and, and claim that final spot uh, with the Maple Leafs. I'm sure Fraser Minton will be granted that opportunity as will Nick Robertson. If he stays around Pontus Holmberg, will get an opportunity to play up in the lineup a little bit. Uh, we'll see what happens, uh, with all of these, these young, young players, uh, Alex Steves probably as well. I would imagine once he signs his RFA deal, uh, might get a chance too. So, uh, lots, lots of, uh, lots of decent prospects for the Maple Leafs who will have an opportunity, uh, later on this season. All right, on the other side, is Crosby's future in Pittsburgh in doubt? We'll discuss that next here in the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. The Locked On Leafs podcast continues with Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti here on a Friday, uh, July 5th, the day after. July the 4th. Did you happen to to uh, watch any of the July 4th uh, Nathan's hot dog eating contest yesterday, Dave? I saw some highlights and was completely disgusted. Impressed, but disgusted at the same time. That That's that's a good way to put it. And and I, I it's almost like a car crash. Like it's it's gross. It's messy, but you just can't look away. For whatever reason, you can't look away and you're just watching this in absolute disgust the entire time, just like with them dunking the the bread and the water, and uh, it's it's gnarly. But uh, you know, no Joey Chestnut, no Joey Chestnut. So, uh, but we had a fellow Paisan. Was it Bertolini? Bur- Bur- yeah, Bur- Bur- Bertolini. Like that. Yeah, I can look it up in a sec, but something like that. Some Paisan ended up winning it. He was like third favorite, I think, on the betting market on FanDuel. Um, so he ended up winning it, which is pretty solid. Uh, fellow Paisan, you love to see First it. First time since 2015 that someone other than Joy Chestnut has won the hot dog eating contest. And I'm not surprised at all. And then uh, was it Mickey Mickey Kuda? Kudo? You know, he's the, the, the female winner. She's 10 for 10. 10 times that she's entered into this competition and she's Damn. 10 for 10. She uh, had 51 glizzies consumed um, world record for, uh, for the women's contest. So um, she would came third actually in the men's contest. So <laughs> she, she can, she can put them back that uh, that is for sure. Uh, and that has nothing to do with hockey and that's got nothing to do with what we're about to uh, talk about. So I don't know if there's even a way to possibly transition, (laughs) no segues, no transitions. We're just going to get into it. Uh, Dave is Sidney Crosby's future in Pittsburgh in doubt. Why is, has this suddenly become a topic of conversation in the hockey world? Well, it's been a topic of conversation ever since the trade deadline, right? Like you got a Pittsburgh Penguins team that, I'm sorry, like Sidney Crosby did not sign up for he the guys like that are not signing up for rebuilds. They're not signing up to just miss out on the playoffs. And so I, I'm wondering it's just a just so weird thinking about Crosby wearing any other jersey. It's just like gonna be watching Steven Samco's wear a different jersey next year. Yeah. Especially one that's yellow. Like that's you- that's just gonna be weird. So like with Crosby, it's even like <sighs> That's a guy who revived the franchise when they were at their lowest. Like they were close to being sold and maybe not even in Pittsburgh anymore. 
Then they win that that lottery pick, and Sidney Crosby comes there, and just you know, once in a lifetime talent, what he's done there. So it's such a weird thing. And on top once of in that, a lifetime talent. Meanwhile, the twenty years prior, they did a Mario Lemieux. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they went from Mario to Sydney. I shouldn't actually feel sorry for that fan base at but all. Anyway, financially, um, it was not going well. No, financially, it was not going well, which is actually funny considering they had Mario in that time. But also, like Kyle Dubas, you're literally heading into your second year, and everyone's talking about that you might not be bringing back a franchise Ooh. cornerstone. Like, man, you, that would that'd be a shot to his legacy, man. If he lets, if he, if he lets Sid walk, or he trades Sid, or or. You know, Sidney Crosby does not finish his career in Pittsburgh. Like, Dubas is going to have to wear that, right? Oh, Whether yeah. he didn't do a good enough convincing him that that he should stay and remain a Penguin for the rest of his life, or he didn't do a good job, good enough job convincing him through his actions of building the team, which is what he's paid to do realistically. Uh, therefore, might he leave potentially if he wants to play in a competitive environment his final couple of seasons in the NHL? I mean, the reason why this has become a, a topic of conversation again, specifically this week, where I've seen a lot of articles and a lot of people starting to talk about this, is because Crosby was eligible for a contract extension on July 1st, much the same as Tavares and, uh, and Mitch Marner. We don't talk about it as often because he's out in Pittsburgh, obviously. But the people of Pittsburgh, they noticed that uh, a contract extension was not announced. And it wasn't announced on the 2nd or the 3rd or the 4th. And it's now the fifth, and there's still no contract extension announced. And again, to go back to Nick Kiprios's piece in the Star, another one of Kipper's, you know, uh, notes or whatever, did mention that uh, it, it, he is of the impression that uh, you know Crosby isn't in any rush to sign an extension. And I mean, what are we supposed to make of that? Is this like, uh, hmm, I didn't like what happened this free agency. Therefore, I'm going to play, let things play out before I commit here. Like, what what could this possibly mean? Or, or are we maybe overblowing this whole situation? I mean, it's very, like, a player like that, like, you look at all the other extensions that we've seen, like, with Soros, Slavin, trying to think who else would have gone. I don't know if anyone else Hedman. got a line from Hedman. Right? Hedman. Like, we're that that's where I'm like, he's your most important player and he's still playing at a high level. Like I, this seems to me to be more of a Crosby thing than it is a penguins thing. Right. And we've heard the rumblings about, you know, would he want to go and team up with Nathan McKinnon in Colorado, which I don't know how the heck that's going to work considering that team barely was able to do anything in free agency with little to no cap space. So I, I do wonder if Crosby's really just, you know what? I'm not ready to commit to anything because I don't want my best, like the, my final years to be seen as like kind of dragging along. And that's why I think Malkin, like Malkin was trying to get paid a little bit, but he's, you know, he was kind of in a similar boat, Chris Letang. You got those three guys. And I remember Kyle Duba saying like, we're trying to keep the window open for these guys and also look to the future. And I'm just like, can't. Kyle, you can't. Can't one or the other. Pooper, get off the pot. It's Pooper, Washington, get off the pot. Washington's dealing with the same thing, you know. Chicago when well, they had wa Washington, Kane. but at least Washington is going for it. Like yeah. whether or not that they are cup competitive, I mean that's probably not. But they at least have the makings of a team that can compete for a playoff spot. Like I like what Washington did this year, actually, to kind of insulate Ovi. And maybe even if you're Sidney Crosby, what are you thinking? Like, well, Ovi's having his owner and his GM go out and make all these additions to try and help him and help that team keep his window open. What the hell is my GM doing? He brought he he got me Kevin Hayes, Sebastian Ajo, the the not good one, the defenseman Sebastian Ajo, like Matt Grizzlick, Blake Lazat, Anthony Bovillier. These are the additions that was made by the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, this offseason and, and, and at the draft for Kevin Hayes and then the others at for agency. That's a far cry from the Mangiapanis, the PLDs, the Matt Roys, 
Uh, who else? There was another big signing that uh, that they made or acquisition that the Washington Capitals made as well. Logan Thompson they brought in to kind of shore up the goaltending as well. So like that that's a team that's doing stuff, right? The Penguins. It's just I don't know, not not a whole lot. Like they trade out Riley Smith, they let Pierre Olivier Joseph go. Jeff Carter retires. Like they just kind of just swapped a couple of guys out as trying to trade to Tristan Jari. Right, like, Not I, I don't know, <laughs> like, I don't, yeah, like, this is like, I could see why Crosby's like, I why, why, like, I understand there's like some people be like, oh, you've been there your whole career, you're just gonna kind of up and leave, but Pittsburgh could also, I don't know if what his trade situation like, they could just up and be like, oh, why don't you, might as well trade you and get something back? Like, I know there was like, I, I wonder if there was a little <laughs> bit of maybe Crosby wasn't too happy to also hear his name out there. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know that that's also like media speculation, just kind of oh, putting yeah. two, two together. It's not necessarily Crosby being shopped. I don't think that Dubas would ever shop Crosby nope. without Sid saying, all right, I'm, I want to go somewhere similar to kind of what happened with, you know, Patrick Kane a couple of years ago. I'd imagine that it would unfold very similarly if that were the case. And I'm just spitballing here, Dave, just spitballing doesn't mean anything. But next season. Sidney Crosby doesn't sign an extension, becomes a free agent on July 1st. The Leafs could have a lot of cap space next July 1st. I think there's a couple players that also will be expiring contracts on that same day. Could free up some space potentially for him to uh, maybe wear the, the, the blue and white. I, I'm just spitballing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. One. I mean, if you're gonna go out and you know break your trend of not being able to get the job done, go and get the guy who's gotten the job done multiple times. I I don't hate that plan. Also, especially because we know that there's another team in Canada that would love the opportunity to get after Sidney Crosby. And I've been hearing this for years, even though the guy's still in the contract with the damn team. That's the one in Montreal. Uh, apparently. apparently- Apparently Vancouver also like there's some interest. Crosby would. I just like how there's all this Vancouver. interest, potential interest in Crosby. And the guy is like, like he might just be like, ah, I'm gonna retire. I think I there's a flat. There's 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 like a five percent chance that he that he goes somewhere. Like and there's a ninety five percent chance that he retires a Penguin. I think yeah. this ultimately gets resolved, and he's gonna retire a Penguin, stay in Pittsburgh his entire career, and he's gonna be a god. They're gonna obviously put his number up in the rafters the second he retires going directly into the hall of fame should be the second he retires um and statues are going to be made of this guy right so it 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 would probably benefit crosby to stick in pittsburgh and stick it out and just you know do whatever he can but uh you know that that other five percent chance though i'm here for the chaos if he does leave i think it'd be interesting I don't think Toronto is a 0% chance of being in on those sweepstakes if it does become a reality. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, Dave. It's it's going to be very interesting how this, you know, the longer this goes, how much more, and especially training camp. Man, I would not want to be uh, Sidney Crosby going to training camp without a contract. Let's say that. Yeah, maybe. Go, maybe. And Crosby... Crosby's very been very pointed about, you know, his what he's what some of the things he says to the media. Like he doesn't. But I could also he, see Crosby saying it'll 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 figure itself yeah. out. Like, oh, I'm not worried sure. about it. It'll it'll work out. Like I don't think it'll be an ongoing story all year. Like Mitch Marner's will be. Like that's going to be a story all season. If he shows up to camp without a deal, I think that's way more significant uh, and, and meaningful than it is for Crosby. Hmm. Right. No, so, oh yeah, for sure. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, really quickly, I know we 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 want to get out of here. We tried to have a short episode. That never happens. Uh, no. the Nikita Zaitsev era in the NHL is over. Signed a four year deal in the KHL today with SKA Ska St. Petersburg. Uh, four hundred eighty two games split between the Maple Leafs, the Senators, and the Blackhawks. Twenty two goals, one hundred eighteen points in those four hundred eighty two games. And uh, we'll all remember Nikita Zaitsev for for what exactly? Nothing outside of that monstrous contract he got for one decent season. And all of a sudden, they decide to pay him seven years, 
four and a half million bucks. Good old Lou. Man, if Nikita Zaitsev owes one person for his is oh. based for setting him up for life, that is one Lou Lamorello. Lou Lamorello, little Mike Babcock. Babs was a big Zaitsev guy too, if I recall correctly. Um, I did the I did the the numbers by the way. So at the time of the uh, at the time of the signing, the percentage of cap was six point one six percent for Zaitsev when he signed the deal. Today, if Zaitsev were to sign a deal or any player to sign a deal like that, what would that deal look like today? It'd be five point four two million dollars in free agency today. So it'd be like Zaitsev signing for like five and a half million bucks. That's Brett Pesci money. Brett Pesci signed six times five and a half this year. Crazy. Crazy. It's more than Zadorov. It's more than than a bunch of other players. It's wild uh, what that contract was way back when. And Maple Leafs had to pay Connor Brown to uh, to get out of it, essentially. And could probably could have used the Connor Brown over the course of these last few years. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, but farewell to Nikita Zaitsev. Congratulations on a... a, a Decent NHL career, I suppose. He made a lot of money. Congratulations on that. But uh, not a lot of people in Toronto going to miss seeing you over on North American ice, if I got to be completely honest. But good luck in the KHL. Good, uh, good, good Nikita. All right. That's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more studio and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy the weekend, folks. We'll uh, reconvene again uh, on Monday. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.